You know, even in America, you had things happening like this. Otto, Otto Benga, who was a pygmy from South Africa, he was brought over for the World's Fair in St. Louis in the early 1900s. And because of the evolutionary thinking of the explorer who brought him over and the evolutionary thinking of the director of the Bronx Zoo, he eventually ended up in a cage with an orangutan in the monkey cage at the Bronx Zoo and became the most popular exhibit at the zoo as people filed past looking at this so-called relationship between the pygmy and an orangutan. No wonder there is a lot of racist attitudes in America today uh, when it comes to uh, certain people groups. You know, back in 1907, uh, the Scientific American publication had an article where, where they stated this. The personal appearance, characteristics and traits of the Congo pygmies are small, ape-like, elfish creatures. So people, in the sci when reading Scientific American, were reading that uh, the pygmies were ape-like ape creatures. Ernst Haeckel, who was really Darwin's bulldog in Germany, and he popularized uh, evolution around the world too through his books, uh, History of Creation, and he wrote this, nothing however is perhaps more remarkable in this respect than that some of the wildest tribes in southern Asia and eastern Africa have no trace whatever of the first foundations of all human civilization, of family life and marriage. They live together in herds like apes. Uh, no wonder there are all sorts of racial uh, overtones and, and prejudices in, in people when it came to looking at certain people groups as people in universities studied these books. Ernest Hagen went on to say at the lower stage of human mental development are the Australians, talking about the Australian Aborigines, some tribes of Polynesians and the Bushmen, Hottentots and some of the Negro, Negro tribes. You know, one of the reasons I wanted to uh, bring those quotes to your attention is to, to state something else that I think is very important. I think the church today, Christian people, should not use the term races anymore. I think we should discard the term races. You see, at the time of, say, Thomas Jefferson, when people talked about races, they talked about the English race, the Irish race, and so on. But because of the influence of Darwinian evolution, now when people talk about races, I believe that evolutionary thinking has so permeated uh, the world that people tend to think in, in evolutionary terms. Even the, the secular world agrees with me on this. The ABC a News Science page, and looking at research done on the concept of race, they said this, more and more scientists find that the differences that set us apart are cultural, not racial. Some even say the word race should be abandoned because it's meaningless. And they went on to say in the same science page on their site on the internet, we accept the idea of race because it's a convenient way of putting people into broad categories frequently to suppress them, to say. The most hideous example is provided by Hitler's Germany and racial prejudice remains common throughout the world. You see, Hitler did use evolution to justify all sorts of racist attitudes to gypsies, to Jews and to others.
By the way, again, don't get me wrong, it doesn't mean that every evolutionist is going to be a racist. That, that, that's not, doesn't necessarily follow. What I am saying, though, is that if people believe in evolution, Darwinian evolution, ultimately they could justify racist attitudes if they wanted to. We well, say if we're not going to use the term races, what term should we use? Well, the Bible tells us that we're all one. In Acts 17, verse 26, uh, we're of one blood. We, we all go back to Adam. I believe we should talk about the different people groups. Really, there's only one race. There aren't any different races of people, just one race biologically, but different people groups. But you know something we should be very, very aware of? We should be very aware of the fact that evolution, as taught today, really inherently still is a racist philosophy. You can't get away from it. It really is. It's inherently as racist as it was in Darwin's day. Now, it's not politically correct to say that today, uh, and there are very few scientists who are willing to admit it, but it is true. By the way, again, don't get me wrong, it doesn't mean that every evolutionist is going to be a racist. That, that, that's not, doesn't necessarily follow. What I am saying, though, is that if people believe in evolution, Darwinian evolution, ultimately they could justify racist attitudes if they wanted to. It's still as racist as it ever was. In fact, uh, one particular researcher... Uh, Rushton, in his book Race, Evolution and Behaviour, it's published in 1997, he ranks the races, what he calls the races, along an evolutionary scale with blacks at the bottom and Asians at the top. At least he's being honest about what evolution really teaches because ultimately, foundationally, that's really what evolution is all about.